In this video, we're going to walk through basic transactions as they relate to recording bad debt expense for credit sales. Everything we look at in this video relates to one underlying principle, a principle that you should be very familiar with by now because we've seen it over and over again. And that principle is the matching principle. Any cost we incur to generate a revenue needs to be recorded as an expense in the same period that we report the related sale. So what does that mean? If we make a sale on credit in a particular period, of course, we will credit sales revenue, which will increase net income, and we record accounts receivable. And if we make sales on credit, there's a likelihood that we won't collect some of that money that customers owe us. We don't know which customers won't pay or how much it is, but we know we're not going to collect it, all of it. So what do we need to do? The matching principle says we need to record bad debt expense in the current period, the same period that we reported the sales revenue. And again, since we don't know particularly which customer isn't going to pay us, we can't record a decrease or a credit to accounts receivable. So instead, we will use an allowance for doubtful accounts. That's a contra account, much like our accumulated depreciation, which shows up as a net reduction in plant property equipment. Our allowance for doubtful accounts says that we won't collect all of our accounts receivable. We don't know in particular which customer won't pay, but we know, based on past experience, that some of them won't pay. And the matching principle says we need to record that expense in the same period we reported the sales revenue. Now, what do we do in subsequent periods when we write off an account receivable? And by write off, we mean rip it up, throw it away. We've called this customer once a week, every week for the past six months, and finally we've realized that they just aren't going to pay us the $2,000 they owe us. So we want to credit accounts receivable for $2,000, and we will debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, one thing you should notice right away, did we have any entry on our income statement? And the answer, of course, is no, because we recorded the bad debt expense back in the period we reported the set. We reported it when we set up that allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, there's two ways that we can estimate our bad debt expense or our allowance for doubtful accounts. Those two methods are the percentage of sales methods and the percentage of accounts receivable method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the percentage of sales method first. In 2019, Vandalay reported $300,000 in credit sales, and the company's allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted credit balance of $1,000. Unadjusted simply means we haven't done our year-end adjusting entries yet. So there are our balances. Based on prior experience, management estimates that 2% of all of its credit sales will eventually result in bad debts. So what's our required journal entry? We take the credit sales of $300,000, multiply it by that 2%, and we're going to record $6,000 in bad debt expense in the current period. And we're going to reduce assets by recording a credit to our allowance for doubtful accounts for $6,000. One thing you should notice is that in the percentage of sales method, we didn't even pay attention to that $1,000 credit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. We simply looked at credit sales and multiplied it by our estimated uncollectible amount of 2% of credit sales. Had the balance in the allowance been a $1,000 debit balance, it wouldn't have changed our bad debt expense at all. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the second method for estimating our bad debt expense or our allowance for doubtful accounts. That's the percentage of accounts receivable method. So, in 1231, 2019, Vandalay reported $50,000 in accounts receivable at year end, and the company's allowance for doubtful accounts has an unadjusted credit balance of $1,000. Based on prior experience, management estimates that 10% of all uncollected AR will result in bad debt expense. So, at year end, if people owe us money, we're expecting, based on past experience, that we will never see 10% of it. So we want to take that $50,000 and multiply it by 10%, and that gives us $5,000. We want a $5,000 credit balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts at year end. Since we already have a $1,000 credit balance, we need to make an adjusting entry for $4,000.
So our journal entry will be to record $4,000 in bad debt expense. That'll be a debit to bad debt expense of $4,000. And we will reduce our assets by recording a $4,000 credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. Again, we can't credit any particular accounts receivable because we don't know at this point in time which customers won't pay. We just know, based on past experience, some of them won't pay. Now, what if instead of a $1,000 credit balance, at year end, our allowance for doubtful accounts had a $5,000 debit balance? Well, we want to do the same calculation. $50,000 in receivable times 10% means we want an ending balance in our allowance for doubtful accounts of $5,000. But now we have a $500 debit balance, so our adjusting entry is going to have to be for $5,500. We'll record bad debt expense in the amount of $5,500 with a debit to bad debt expense, and we will reduce our assets through a credit to our allowance for doubtful accounts in the amount of $5,500. So again, to recap, Everything we're doing in this chapter relates to our revenue recognition principle, which says we record revenues when we deliver the goods or perform the service. It doesn't matter when we get paid. And it's just that if we make sales on credit, if we trust customers to pay us later, we know there's going to be a cost associated with that. And that brings up the matching principle. It says any cost incurred to generate a revenue, which in this case will be our bad debt expense, should be recorded in the period that they generated revenues. And that's why we do the year-end adjusting entries, either using a percentage of receivable method to estimate our bad debt expense or our percentage of sales method.